Well, we really are motoring on this week's EMBN show, quite literally, as we'll be discussing the new motors from Bros and Yamaha. In fact, I think it's time we took stock of everything e-bike motor in 2020. Starting off with the news from Yamaha, they've now updated the existing PWX to a PWX2. Now, the thing with the old motors is where they did tend to run out of steam at higher cadences. This new motor has tackled that, so it's gonna give 50% more support in the higher cadences. Not only that, they've made it 380 grams lighter and 14% smaller than the old Yamaha PWX motor. Now, this motor is a really good motor for climbing, but they've improved even that side of things by making the engagement even more rapid than it was even before. Oh, yeah. Christ, it's been an amazing motor. It's one that we used for like the rock. That was a really good uh, mm -hmm. slab we climbed on that. And the engagement is crazy on a Yamaha motor. Well, it's so even better see. now. It's even better. Really? It's even more direct, yeah. Cracking. You get to get into the power band there yeah. even quicker on this new PWX motor. Nice, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, over in Germany, Bros have come out with a new ecosystem for their setup, which means they now have battery display and, of course, seven motors in the range. And I think what they've done is they've taken the technology and the casings from the Bros Mag S, the magnesium casing, and now put that over onto the cheaper motors, which is actually huge, huge news, right? Yeah, the batteries are looking super slick too. Really slim line design, 636 watt hours. So we're gonna see some nice designs using that whole Bro system. Um, all dealers as well have got a really good service toolkit, so you can actually take your Bro's motor and your bike into a Bro service center, get it all tweaked up, much like you can the Bosch systems, things mm -hmm. like that, so yeah. you can raise the different levels, power and all that as well. So it's, I, it's, I, I think not only that, it's just big news because over 40 brands use Bro's motors. So, mm. uh, you know, the fact that, that these manufacturers have now got a whole system is gonna make things so much simpler for the product managers and designers on the brands. Definitely, and I think something we did see with the Bro system going against the Bosch is that there's no anti-tuning software on the Bro stuff, whereas Bosch has got quite a lot of anti-tuning uh, mm -hmm. software on it, so it means that Perhaps you can de-restrict that bike easier. I know with the Bosch systems had quite a kickback from people saying that they do want to run a dongle or a de-restricted bike. So it's pretty interesting stuff coming from Bros, I think. I think, Chris, like I mentioned earlier, it's time for a bit of a recap mm -hmm. of where we're at with motors because, you know, with Bosch launching their new Performance Line CX only a few weeks ago, yeah. Yamaha's new uh, PWX2 mm -hmm. and the Bros ecosystem, where we are, with motors. Now, first of all, I think we can talk about many things such as weight, torque, batteries, and apps. Let's noise talk about weight well, and noise as mm -hmm. well. Let's start off with weight. Yeah. Now, we know that the Fazur motor comes in at 1.9 mm -hmm. kilos. It's got 60 newton meters of torque. And you've got the heavy weights, which are over three kilos, such as the, GQ. the TQ mm -hmm. and the older PWX. But we seem to be getting into a sweet spot of weight. Don't you think? Yeah, I think the weight's always you know, going to be a talking point about the motor, that low down weight combined with the battery obviously is quite a big part of the e-bike itself, mm -hmm. you know, for the handling and you know, suspension, things like that. It is, as you say, there's a sweet spot coming and I feel it is around the two and a half kilo mark. Yeah, which is pretty much the Shimano, mm -hmm. the Bros and the Bosch motors, yeah, yeah. right? Two yeah. and a half kilos mm -hmm. right over the sweet spot. Mm -hmm, definitely, yeah. and what about torque? Talk, well, now it's, it's difficult to talk about talk because it is ultimately is just a number. Now, the Fazur motor has 60 Newton meters, the yep. Shimano E7000 has 60 Newton meters, but they actually deliver power in different ways if you go out on the trail. Uh, on the other high end of the spectrum, you've got the TQ motor, which has got 120 Newton meters, mm -hmm. uh, which is very powerful. And, and granted, if you've got consistent grippy surface and steep, steep hills, High end torque in general will get get you up the hills quicker. For less effort or there's always gonna be effort involved. Yeah. But what like we've mentioned several times, you cannot confuse those numbers with mm. uh, better ability in super technical terrain where there's like the grip's not so good. So like irrespective of the torque, you need to have the software that delivers that power as well. Definitely. And I think I think most of the bikes actually do deliver the power well, Nicely, but we're, yeah. we're still at early days though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think one big thing for me when I'm out on my e-bike is the actual noise that the motor delivers as mm. well. Like I was out on my Specialized with the Bros motor, obviously totally silent compared to like some of the noisier stuff like the Shimano and the Yamaha tend to be a little bit noisier. And I think it does detract from the ride. 
Do you think so? It depends what kind of riding you're doing. If you're up to speed, you know, rattling through the forest and banging off rocks and roots and stuff, then you don't mm. hear that motor noise. But I was so, just riding across a byway up on the hills, like nice and quiet, could hear birds and stuff. Whereas so, it's like. So here's the question for you then. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen updates from Bros, uh, updating the casings, making yep. them lightweight. We've seen the update from Bosch, mm -hmm. getting rid of the resistance past 25Ks. Yep. Uh, we've seen Yamaha PWX system is now uh, better at higher cadences. Do you think that we're going to see quieter motors from the likes of Shimano and, um, and those guys? I think that's the, pretty much the only thing that's missing off my tick list from all of those guys. As I say, the Bros system is super silent. Um, it's not restricted over 25 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also how, how that power goes from mm. 23Ks yeah. to 28Ks. Mm. And on some bikes, especially the new Bosch bike, you go from 23 to 28 and it's absolutely seamless. seamless. It? Yeah. Whereas, you know, there are some motors out there, such as maybe the Yamaha, where there is a bit of a, there's a, bit of a ledge. Yeah, 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 I think it's definitely not one manufacturer has like, totally ticked all those boxes for me just yet, but I feel it is coming any day soon. And one final time. thing, one final thing is batteries. One mm. battery or two, because uh, me and Josh really recently visited Merida mm -hmm. and uh, they decided to go for one battery, 500 watt hour battery, and you can take one uh, spare battery in your backpack so you've got 1,000 watt hours, whereas you need know, the likes of Specialized who've got a yeah. 700 watt hour battery. What's your, what's your preferred solution? I'm a two battery man, I'm afraid. I'll take a backpack on a big ride if I need that extra you know, range, but if I'm just out for a normal ride, then mm -hmm. pretty much one battery's pretty good for me. Josh, what's your verdict on the batteries? One big one. Josh is a one big one man. Now, trials on e-mountain bikes is something that me and Chris discuss quite frequently mm. here on EMBN. Uh, I've also chatted with Danny McCaskill and Chris Ackrig, uh, but we're really pleased to get this new video in which Victor Lucas shot in Spain of... Um, Nathan McComb. Nathan McComb, or Nathan McComb. Comb. Like comb. comb your hair, I think. Anyway, this guy riding his Vitus, or Vitus, is absolutely on the money, I think. Yeah, definitely. And it's really, really inspirational mm -hmm. to see just what you can do on an e-mountain bike. And Chris, it's got me wanting to go out and learning how to do those, what do you call hops. those things? Rear wheel hops. Back hops. Back hops, yeah. I mean, hops. get up on top of a rock, yeah. onto the next rock. It's pretty impressive on an e-bike. I know a lot of people always say about, oh, these bikes are way too heavy to do anything, but you mm -hmm. watch this guy literally just throwing it around like it's nothing. And do you know what I like as well? I like I like the flow element mm. to it. Yeah, I think How... he comes from motorbike trials, I would say, by the flow he's got and the way right. he's moving the bike around. And you can see the effort. I mean, going up those steps near the end, yeah. that's a lot of, you, mm. you, you know there's going to be a lot of effort to get up those steps because they're not shallow steps, no, no, are they? It's really good. I really like the rock stuff, the natural stuff, because that's way harder than riding the street stuff. The street stuff's always a bit more easy if you've got those defined edges and mm -hmm. grip, whereas natural stuff's all yeah. like rugged and- Unpredictable. Yeah, unpredictable, yeah, yeah, surfaces as well. So, so uh, Victor and you guys, I think, mm -hmm. have done a fantastic job on uh, showing just what is possible on an e-mountain bike. Now, as predicted, there's been plenty more new Bosch motored e-mountain bikes coming onto the market. And the last seven days, uh, these two bikes have really caught our attention. First is the Simplon and also the Conway. Mm -hmm. Now the Simplon is amazing for many reasons, not only that it looks absolutely amazingly sleek, but also in terms of the range of batteries on this bike. This is a big one, Steve, are you ready? Yep. 625 watt hours of battery built into it, a Bosch battery in there, mm -hmm. and an optional 500 watt hour battery you can actually clip onto it. Right, so you got Possibly 1125 watt hours, mm -hmm. and then I guess you could take a spare battery with you. Can you imagine that? One, 1625 watt hours of battery? Yeah. Do you think yeah. you could last that long? Josh could be carrying his camera bag in boost all day long. <laughs> <laughs> pretty impressive, but the whole the bike is looking pretty good. You got a yeah. 150, 170 mil travel fork on there, yeah. an option. 150, 160 rear. Yeah, or coil on air shock on the rear. Yeah, is it carbon or alloy? Full carbon as well, yeah. and um, flip chip as well, so you can run 29 or 27.5 wheels. God, they've delivered a hell of a belt in bike there, haven't they? And lastly, roll off ready as well, so you can put that roll off <laughs> E14 setup on there with Whatever. the Bosch, Whatever. With the Bosch Whatever. system, get it all working together. Whatever. Really forward thinking. What about the Conway? The Conway. Conway Zyron uh, comes in alley or carbon versions mm. with 140 uh, mil travel, 27.5 wheels, uh, and a chainstay length of 450 millimeters, which is quite a sweet spot for e-mountain bikes. Mm. 
Now something that caught my eye this week, Steve, was this Park Tools Powerlift bike stand, the uh, PRS33. Oh, the PRS33, oh yeah, no, yeah, wow. Well. I think the boys at Race Cross Cycles are going on, haven't they? Yeah, it can lift up to 54 kilos, so you can pretty much lift any e-bike out there. Yeah. You can mount it double-sided, so you can work on e-bikes back, you know, one on one side, one on the other. Um, 360 rotatable head, so you can turn your bike upside down for if you're working on it. Why would you want to turn your bike upside down? Well, you know, if you've got a problem with the bottom bracket or something, but you can raise it up and down, push of a button, it just saves breaking your back trying to lift your e-bike up. Chris, I love your enthusiasm. Uh, now, I had this in from Richard in Vancouver. Obviously, his wife or girlfriend has been inspired by Danny McCaskill. <laughs> Uh, and his kid uh, ran a pump track on an yeah. e-mountain bike. Not just a kid, two kids in that trailer, <laughs> Steve. So, yeah, Frey HT 1000, getting, putting the laps in with the kids in the bike. Stepping it up. Pretty cool. In the comments this week, Steve, it's all about your e-bike versus gravel bike, you versus Chris Opie across the mountain. We've had a few uh, comments on the video. Can I tell you one comment we had was mm -hmm. uh, someone was telling us off for littering the countryside. Oh, with the sheep. With the well, sheep, the sheep moustache. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I did not buy this sheep moustache from a joke shop. It was actually sheep's wool, Off the which had wine. plenty of sheep, uh, sheep's uh, urine and feces on it. Still smell it to this day, though. Right. <laughs> um, but Gavin Layton, he's saying, could you not find a gravel e-bike? Otherwise, what is the point? Uh, that's coming up in a future video, Gavin. Gravel e-bike, nice. Mm -hmm. um, and Artem Ponzak, he's saying, nobody noticed that the results table was actually wrong at the end. If you recalculate the times, the gravel bike actually wins. By 105.41 to 106.28. Who did the maths on that one? I did the maths, so obviously I got my maths wrong, but the final results were about 40 seconds differences. Really? 40 seconds good. difference between uh, the e-bike and the gravel bike. Mm -hmm. And Robot Man, he's saying, now swap bikes and do it all again. You don't ride normal bikes, Steve, do you? <laughs> I do ride normal bikes. They happen to have motors on them and they're called e-mountain bikes. They're actually proper mountain bikes to go proper tool mountain for the job. biking. Right, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, now, before we get into where in the world, I just want to point out the horrendous clash We've got going on today on the EMBN show. Catch up and wine. Did you not? Did I not tell you that today's a wine day? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought it was for the weekend. Anyway, guys, don't do the same mistakes as us. Check out the EMBN shop and you can get properly colour coordinated with your t-shirts for the summer or your jackets for the winter. Should you live down in the southern hemisphere? Now, Steve, are you ready for where in the world? This one's quite Always. close to home, Always. Middlesbrough. Right, that's not and that close, is it? Fairly it's close. A bit, it's a bit, um, Midlands. It's a bit like your video riding on your doorstep and you shot it in Edinburgh. <laughs> Hardly on your doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> a bit removed, true. <laughs> but this one's in from Chris, he's on a specialised Kinevo and mm -hmm. he's done a summer solstice ride. That is beautiful. Look at this. That so is absolutely beautiful. Staying out of his tent in yeah. the middle of Middlesbrough. Yeah, all again. Same rider? Yeah, dawn or dusk, what would you say? Dawn till dusk, I think that's amazing. Do you know what? We want to know We want to know about trips like these that you guys go on, uh, whether you go on them by yourselves or with a group of mates, uh, whether it's in the winter or the summer, mm. whatever part of the world, just tell us what you've been doing because it really is inspiring to get uh, trips like that up on the EMBN show. Okay, coming up on the channel this week on Friday, Chris has got a video, five ways to spice up your life, isn't that Chris? Spicing up your trail ride, yeah, just little things you can do on your normal trail ride to add a little bit of spice to it. To spice your life. And on Sunday, Steve, what have you got? On Sunday, it is EMBN versus GCN, uh, myself versus Hank. Uh, it's uh, it's quite a wet old affair this mm, one. Yeah, it sounds yeah. pretty interesting. Uh, so tune into that on Sunday for some antics on the well, on the Wales England border. <laughs> now it's bike vault time, and this has got to be one of the strongest starts to any bike vault we have mm -hmm. ever done on EMBN. Uh, this is from Matt, who's shot his Levo in Halden Forest, and uh, I think I think this sums up everything beautifully. Some nice distance shot there. Foxglove sunset. Bit yeah. Of pine forest. Yeah. I amazing can, trails. It can on, only only go one way. This, Chris. Super nice. Next up is Bert with his Trek Powerfly 9.7. Yeah. In uh, here in Wichen in Holland. Mm. 
Uh, it says it's pretty hard for a 55-year-old Dumbo who should probably stick to cross-country. Still, I had a blast! Looks good. It's, it's nice, I think. So mean. Sorry. What are you thinking? Come on then. You said it now. Can't go back and... Oh, a dog. 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 Ian with his 2019 Lapier HT700i. Up on, uh, up on High Cliff in Gisborough Woods, North Yorkshire. What's the dog called? Uh, Bonnie Lurcher. Bonnie the Lurcher. Oh, look at Bonnie. It's great having an e-bike and a dog, isn't it? Trail dog. I like a trail and what, dog. what bike do you say it was? It's, it's a Lapier HT... Sorry, yeah. Lapier Hotel 700. Oh, I. Great. I, that's a lot of fun. Come on. Yeah, you call it. Sing rice. Alright. And then next up we've got... Composition. Sorry. Composition. It's looking good. Composition. Uh, this is David with his Lapier E Zesty. Up think, in Glen Tress. Yeah, actually ridden around right there as well quite yeah. a bit. I mean the bike, I mean that bike, I reckon the bike needs more love. It's a beautiful, beautiful mm. bike. Just need to be a bit more. It's, it's nice. nice, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, Peter here with his high bike Enduro Enduro RX. Seven cool Sisters. Bike. Seven Sisters mm. in East Sussex. Uh, it's a good place to ride. I want to see the bike. Ah, oh, so critical. I feel really bad. So critical. I don't want to see the bike down by the white cliffs. What, on the water? Oh no, I want to see the bike like... Oh, on the beach? Like, the, basically if you, if you get to take the bike down on the cliffs, uh -huh. the, the light's going to reflect off the rock onto the bike and it's just going to make it a bit more punchy. So nice? It's a nice. Whoa. So this is Paul with his 2018 Focus Jams squared. That has got to be Australia. Got to be Australia. Uh, Orumba Mountain Bike Club in Newcastle Secret Beach. So yeah. Where's Orumba? It's got to be. It's got. It's got to be Australia, right? Definitely. 53 year old endurance rider trying to turn yeah. back the clock on his age. Since getting this bike 2,500 kilometers later, Whoa. but 20 kilos and a broken neck and feeling much better. Does it mean 20 kilos neck. lighter? Yeah, yeah. Lost 20 kilos. 20 kilos. Holy sh! That's a lot of weight. Stuck in a rut there as well, isn't it? it looks like his wheel spun <laughs> sunk it down. But uh, go, got to take take our hats off. Mm -hmm. I know we haven't got hats on, but we would take them off if we had them on. And it's got to be a super nice. This one in from Mike. Another, another one stuck in a rut. Yeah, and his focus bold squared. Mm -hmm. uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, Canada. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice. Nice, 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 nice. Just the angle it's of the really bike. Nice, yeah. Really nice. Really nice, but. Not quite super yeah. nice. Oh, Conago. Conago. From Where Marcus. Conago EMTB. Yeah. Out in Finland in the East Boo. God, it really is worldwide, isn't it? Mm. Great stuff. Conago makes some nice looking bikes, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Uh, super nice, I reckon. Oh, this is pretty cool. Jonas with his Trek LT7. Is that actually a bike vault photograph? I like to mix it up in a bike vault. This is know. in Tromso, which is in Norway, I think. Mm. Epic yeah. evening out, burgers in town, and out riding, and bonfire, and a box of wine in the midnight sun. Doesn't say that. <laughs> yes, you're <laughs> right, Steve. Oh my god, great! Burgers in town after riding, and bonfire. Oh, that's brilliant. What do you think? Then? Bonfire and a box of wine. That's oh, an idea. Legends. Right? Super Absolute nice. legends. Super nice. <laughs> this one in. We don't oh, see beautiful. Too many Look of these. at that. Look at that backdrop as well. Sans. This is from Stefan on his Sans E27.5 Plus Pro. I bet you can't pronounce that location. Italy's Van Duis Gam 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 Pilalem Gam Pilalem Crikey Let us know how to pronounce that because that's banging That's got to be super nice isn't it? Definitely And that's it We that's are it. out of the bike vault and some absolute belters in there this week How did you get your bike on the bike vault Chris? Use the upload service Details for that are up on screen now and it could be you in next week's bike vault so that's it for this week's EMBN show. Like I said, we've motored through it this week. Um, let us know what you think about e-bike motors, e-mountain bike motors, and what you think are the strong points and the weak points of the current systems and what you'd like to see on e-bike motors uh, in the future in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of performance and also batteries as well. Yeah, and if you want to stick around, be sure to check out Steve versus Chris Opie on e-bike versus gravel. That's a really cool one. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Drop some comments in the box below. We'll see you next week.